Quiet on the set. Can we please have quiet on the set? Hello and welcome to the Far From Normal Radio Show with your host, Jay Moss, Bud Vino, and Jesse Weiner. Well, hello, 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 and welcome once again to the Far From Normal Radio Show. Just wanted to get you in the mood for our Halloween night with uh, that Friday the 13th intro there because we have some very special guests this evening and without further ado what i'd like to go ahead and do right now is bring in my co-host mr bud vino bud how are you doing yo 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 and yo jay money moss tuesday october 31st 2017 halloween one of my favorite days of the year one of the two the other being friday the 13th so what a great way to <laughs> intermingle the two beautiful days of the year uh, and Jay, we don't have Jesse Weiner on with us tonight, but she's with us in spirit, and I know she's listening, uh, out trick-or-treating, I'm quite sure, as is uh, <laughs> my youngest son, I'm sure my oldest, I told him to really score big on the chocolate, um, and I told him, Daddy has to obviously check it all thoroughly, which means I'll have to pocket some of it, uh, the joys of being a dad. Uh, tonight, we've got two very special guests, Jay. Uh, yep. Without further ado, I'm going to bring on the first one quickly, because his time is limited. Uh, and we're very appreciative of how, you know, to have him on the show. Uh, I've been watching this gentleman since the early 80s, and he's done amazing things with his life since then. He's not a one-dimensional man by any means. Friday the 13th, part uh, three, 1982's uh, Larry Zerner, who played Shelley, uh, the lovable Shelley in part three. Mr. Zerner, thank you so much for joining us on Halloween night, sir. Oh, thanks for having me. Great to be thank here. You. And, thank you. And Jay... I know this has been this, this has been quite a bit uh, in the making, and I know you might have wanted to get into some other things first, and we can do that after. I think this was planned oh, yeah, this way, yeah, and it's going to roll beautifully. And Jay, I'll let you say hello to Mr. Zerner as well. I do a couple. Hello, things here. Larry. Yeah. Uh, very grateful to have you mm-hmm. on board. We absolutely appreciate and and love and care about you because uh, not only have you been in the Hollywood scene, um, but also. The good fact is, and we'll get into a little bit, is that you are also an attorney. So that's yes. a double whammy. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. coming on board. Uh, great. Jay, uh, sorry, you're, you're, some of you are you're dropping out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're a little, oh. you're a little bit, Jay. Uh, dropping out a little, Jay. Mr. Zerner, he was snacking. It was funny. I, I was talking to my attorney, uh, Larry, t- today because I, I talked to him a couple hours ago, and he knew about the show, and I told him uh, di- different uh, areas of law. But I said, I, I think it, people, I, and he knows he always laughs, I said, people are either kind of put off by me or kind of get a kick out of me. And I said, I think he was probably a little put off by my gushing and, and, and probably thought to himself, yeah, I've done a lot in my life in the last 30 years since I've been on that movie, my friend. So uh, we're excited to hear about it, as Jay said, and I know I've researched too, and I've seen you've been involved in a lot of different things, Larry, um, since that movie in terms of uh, pretty groundbreaking cases and some pretty uh, big cases uh, throughout, out there. Uh, and, and so, and I know we discussed briefly the family. Yeah, but it's, Friday, it's Halloween. I'm sure people want to hear about Friday 13th. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, and that's and I and I know I wanted to give you a little credit too for what you've done since then. Now I wanted to ask you too because we had mentioned. Um, did you know back then one of the biggest things I want to ask is did you know that it was gonna I know it was part three and it was already big, but did you know just how big it was gonna be? You know I know in 2017 how big it was gonna be such an iconic series. No, be- no, because. Part one had come out and had done, uh, you know, it, w- it was a thing. And part two had not, you know, had done okay. It wasn't, it wasn't a blockbuster. And so you're at the third and no one's expecting it. You know, it's the third in the series and great. And, and there really hadn't been, I, I don't think there was a, 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 a horror series that had gone three deep yet no. by, in 82. Halloween three had not come out yet, I don't think. No, um, uh, Halloween, 
Halloween 2 had just come out in 81, and Nightmare on Elm Street wasn't even around yet. Yeah, so did. there really yeah, wasn't this thing of having 6, 7, 8, 9. That, that wasn't a thing in, in, in the early 80s where you would have, you know, multiple things. So, no, I mean, there wasn't, you know, and then we came out and – well, mostly I, I'm going to put the success on the fact that it was 3D, and it was really good 3D. We were yeah. uh, one of the first movies that went into the, the polarized 3D, not red-blue, and that was a huge thing. And um, so when the movie came out, we were, we were number one at the box office that weekend. We were number one the next weekend. Uh, you know, by 82 standards, we were we made a lot of money. I mean, I remember, you know, uh, I think $36 million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, in eighty-two dollars, which is probably like a hundred million dollars today, uh, maybe more. Right. Um, you know, which is for part three is amazing, and um, and and people would, I mean, you know, people would come up to me and go, "Oh yeah, we saw that movie again and again because it was so much fun to go to the theater and watch it in three D." Well, I, I've often, I, it's still kind of an unanswered question for me. I have uh, kinships with certain Fridays, and I think everybody that's a fan does in terms of likes the series. For me, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it was that was so enjoyable about 3. I think it was probably the different look of Jason and the way Richard Brooker carried Jason. And rest in peace to Richard Brooker, I know. Uh, and you were the one who gave and People out there that don't know, uh, Jason got his infamous mask from Shelley, uh, a.k.a. Larry Zerner, uh, in Part 3. And it was the first time that he ever donned that mask is when he um, put that spear in the eye of your uh, girlfriend-to-be, perhaps. I think you were making headway with Vera. Um, I don't think so. Some, Wasn't going to happen. Think so. <laughs> uh, well, she, I think when she saw the picture, uh, then it's, it, we can it, believe it, it, that uh, Jason come back from the dead. We cannot believe that Shelly can get uh, uh, Vera in right. the dead. But that's right. a step too far. Right. Speaking of the 3D, I've seen interviews with you too and with other cast members in the movie. You said the most tedious thing, and obvious thing, was trying to get the 3D right because it was new and just trying to like when you were doing the wallet scene. Uh, you know, yeah. in, the, in the store. Yeah, you have to get, yeah, you, you know, things like that. You have to get it right to the camera. And, you, you know, if you don't hit the camera, it doesn't work. So, so it's, it's, it, it, right. there's, a, there's a kind of, you know, they don't teach you that in law school. Throw in, the, or in acting right. school. You know, throw the wallet at the camera. That's it's not a class you <laughs> right, teach right. In, in acting school. So. And I have, I have another question because I've heard more, and, and maybe there's some stuff out there that I've heard, but I heard more, in part four, I've heard that Ted White kind of, and he said, stayed away from the cast to kind of make it more, uh, even for the cast, more of a natural reaction. Was was Richard Brooker like that, like Ted White in that way? Or was he more approachable? Well, Richard, well, no, I mean, he wasn't standoffish, but the way the movie is, no one really has a lot of time, except Dana at the end. First of all, we shot it chronologically, right. almost, except right. for the scene at the store, which was shot first. Everything was shot chronologically. So... Jason doesn't really, you know, d- come meet the people, you know, especially, right. you know, we were, we didn't really hang, you know, other than my scene with the, the gang members and then the gang members have their own, you know, part of the movie, that second act right. part within the thing. And then we weren't there to film. And then we come back and we're doing our own thing and we're never with Richard. You know, when you, when right. you meet Richard, you just see him kill you. That's all you have. That's right. your only interaction with Richard. There's no, none of the people except for Dana have any Anything more than five seconds with Richard seeing him alive. <laughs> right. I, 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 I believe that Kimmel said, too. Oh, go ahead, Jam. Can you, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. I was just going to ask, so basically, when you see Richard, he's sitting right beside you, you're like, oh, crap, I'm done. <laughs> well, in fact, I never have a scene with Richard. No, he doesn't. Um, that's one of the I go in the barn, people. and Richard comes out of the barn. And then later, well, I come I out of the to- barn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing about that scene with uh, with Larry is is that's I know and he's mentioned and that's definitely what I took it as as a kid. Like, was it a joke? And I you know, and then the character who discovers him too at the doorway thinks the same thing. Get up, get right. up, Shelley. It's not funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I always wanted and and, the, and I've read too and I've heard you talk, Larry, about there was supposed to be a scene that was actually in the script where that you know the bikers kind of chase you and that, that would have been kind of neat if you guys had been. Oh in- yeah. Yeah, if they could have done that, yeah, it was a whole chase. So we're in the Volkswagen and they're on the motorcycles and we're at the store. So I think we had, there was champagne and I popped the champagne cork. Right. And 
into their face and that makes them go flying and then we and then the, that that makes and then stop short the thing and they flip over they were going to flip over the, I mean, the whole stunt thing you know like jason bornish and i you know i right. think they realized it was way too technically challenging yeah. to compare yeah. what right. they were doing with the with the 3d it was and and unnecessary i mean but it was it was really fun i, I remember because we had that was my audition scene we we did that in the audition yeah that would have been neat to see and i know for fans of the movie too, I know that um, you know that's the way it goes. You see Larry uh, uh, pull a mortal sin by knocking over some uh, bikers' bikes, and then you see them. You know they, they find um, Larry and company in the van where they siphon the gas and this and that. So yeah, great movie. I, you know, and I say we're going to have Debbie Voorhees on after. And Five is another one. A lot of people don't like Five. I do, um, and I just think it's because it goes back to like the '80s sort of, you know, what that what those Friday movies were. You know, it, it, it did a little something different. It tried to, which I thought was great. Um, but, yeah, it, it definitely is a fun movie. And I know there's other cast members, too, that have gone on to do other things, too. I know Tracy Savage was big in, like, around the O.J. Simpson time and things like that. And mm -hmm. uh, other actors have done other things with their careers. Amazing things. Um, so, now, were you ever asked, can I ask you this, to do, um, you know, was there any sort of script? Was it always, I've heard you say, where Shelley died that way? Was there ever a time where... There was ever talk of maybe you not dying and coming around for part four or anything like that? No, no, they were never. No, this was, I mean, this is the, the nature of the movies. You are one of the people right. who go die. That's, you know, that's what you do. You're in the movie to yeah. die. You're in the movie for Jason to kill you. That's your purpose. And then there's a final girl. She, that's her job to live. Everyone else's right. job is, is to be fodder, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what an, what an honor to be able to say that. And to be able to say that you were the one who gave Jason his infamous mask. Jay, go ahead. I think you had something you want to ask. Well, gave you is a little strong, but gave him, right? Is the, I wouldn't say gave it to him, but he, he, oh, well, it's my yeah. mask. I still go, you know, stealing it does not mean it's his. It's still, it's mine. Right, it should be Shelly. It always should be Shelly's mask that Jason stole is what they should say, not right. Jason's mask. And I will. But whatever. And this, is, this has been brought up, too, uh, Larry, is that you had an amazing amount of things stuffed in that little bag, in that little oh, yeah. container. So you, yeah, you yeah. had uh, magic, you had uh, fake blood, you had, oh, what, you had the spear, a wet suit, the spear gun. Spear gun. A wet suit, that <laughs> couple masks. Mask. Uh, you had uh, an amazing amount. You are, if you had lived, you would have gone on, Shelly, to be one of those people that helps people pack their houses and suitcases and things like that because you did a masterful job of packing that, I must say. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing that he, that he gets yeah, that I think, done. And I know they have a DVD out now, too. I have it where it actually, and I'll give a shout-out to my friend Tammy Clegg in Nashville. We grew up together on these movies. And I have taken this to her house. They, they have the DVD that actually has the 3D glasses in it. Uh, and you can have it in a 3D version so you can see it at home on your TV and with the 3D glasses. And it's, it's pretty neat just to have that. And it, it came with a little book and things like that. So uh, that was pretty neat. Yeah, but the 3D, I mean, that's a, they went back and made it a red-blue 3D, right. and it's, I think it's horrible. I mean, I've tried to watch it, but it really gives you a headache after 10 minutes. I mean, I wish I they it, would do it right and do a proper 3D a, print. Hopefully they will. I mean, is there any talk of that? Have you heard anything about that or no? No, and I, I just don't, you know, 3D sort of died, right? The idea of, you know, they're, they're really not making right. these 3D DVDs anymore, so I, I don't see it happening. Yeah, right. Yeah, it definitely. Uh, even though they came with a 3D TV, I don't think it really was a, a major hit. So that's another mark to the market, I guess, that they they put out some of these great things uh, with different TVs, even the curved TV, but it doesn't seem to be taking on for some odd reason. Uh, but it's, well, that's technology. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm amazed. Yeah. I'm amazed that uh, obviously you as a uh, younger person being able to do these things, is this uh, obviously this is a great life experience for you being able to be on the film at a young age and, and being able to do these things? Is, uh, uh, what was it like for you uh, as, as a younger person being able to do those things? 
It was, a, I mean, literally a dream come true. I mean, I was 18. I was, you know, I wanted to be an actor. I'd, I'd been acting through high school. I was a theater major in, in college. My plan was to be a professional actor. And, it, you know, I, I've told the story. Maybe you know the story. You know, I was literally on a, on a street corner in Westwood, and the writers came up to me and I said, are you an actor? And, and, and I'm like, yes. And they're like, well, we wrote this movie, and, and we think it'd be perfect. And 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 I gave him my uh, my agent's name. I had an agent, and 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 that's how I got the audition. And and I, I mean to 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 be in a movie and and you know get, and a Friday night <laughs> movie and to get paid and 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 to have fun. It was it was fantastic. I mean it is fantastic. There was, there was nothing. It was great. Every day I was happy to be on the set. I couldn't wait to get to work and and do it. It was great. Absolutely. Well, I gotta and, say, you know you go ahead go ahead. I was going to say, Jay, I got to say, you know, people act in different ways. You can tell us. Usually, I'm pretty good at reader of energies. You seem like a, a friendly, fun-loving guy then, too, like a, a likable guy. I think that's what it was that people really did like that character so much, and I think it became bigger than it was ever really meant necessarily to be in that way. You know, and this, yeah, well, Shelly, look, on the first day of filming, uh, Steve Miner, the director, said to me, he said, look, don't, I don't want you putting on a character. Just Shelly is you. That's it. I mean, and really, Shelley was me. I mean, he was an actor. He wanted, right? I was an actor. He was fat. He, was, right. he had low self-esteem. All those stuff. That was all me. There really wasn't. There really wasn't a lot of daylight between me and Shelley, other than the, his packing ability, which I didn't have. And uh, <laughs> you know, and and I know people like Shelley, and but there, are, you know, I, I there, I'd say there's like twenty percent of the people who who hate Shelley. I've certainly met a, right, a vast right, right. number of people who think Shelley is the worst character in the series. He's annoying, and I get that. And you know, all right, but you know, right, I'll take four out of five. <laughs> right. Well, you can, yeah, you can't please everybody. And I, I got to say, right. yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely. I think it's as I said to you privately too. I think for me, it was just like Shelley. The realness of a character, we all have some Shelley in us, like in life in terms of it was a time where you were an adolescent and you really were. It wasn't like you were acting as an adolescent. You were really, you, know, you were 18 back then, you were young. And the insecurities that we all have and the way we are with women and the way you were was very genuine, you know, in terms of the way we've all been there. Like, hey, I really like you, not feeling totally 100% about yourself. That's, and, I did not have to work hard to get that sense memory of asking a pretty girl out and getting turned right. down. I've been there, you know, I've been there. We, we, all, we all have, and I think that's what it was. It was, it was, a, lov it was a lovable nature about that movie, too. I think that was just, it was just a fun, it was a Friday the 13th movie. You know, it, it was, and I, I like, you know, it was directed by Steve Miner, which was great. And was he fun to work with? I heard he was a pretty fun guy. I know he did part two as well. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was, you know, I think that it wasn't a huge lot of laughs on the set. I mean, mostly because it took so long to set up for the 3D. So the actors would sort of be where in the dressing area with the trailers and we'd hang out there and then they call us the set and we do our thing and then we'd go out. I mean, it wasn't so, we, we, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't like a really light, you know, we're one of those sets where everybody's playing jokes because really there was, it was, right. we didn't have, I mean, it was, it was just taking a long time to do stuff and they weren't into <laughs> playing, they weren't, they weren't oh, a barrel well, of laughs, but it was, Frankie. they weren't, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, oppressive or anything. He wasn't, he wasn't a taskmaster. Master. Right, right. I know he did a cameo in three at the beginning. So <laughs> yeah. that, that, the news report, yeah. So that, that's pretty neat. Um, there was another question I had for you that somebody uh, had uh, sent me that wanted wanted me to ask you. And I'll come up with that in a minute. I've got my notes here. I'm going to breeze through. But I'm kind of going off the top with stuff that I'm thinking about that I think certain people would like to ask you too. Um, Jay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm monopolizing the conversation. Oh, no, no. It's, um, I was just going to ask, actually, what was it like uh, being in a movie where Jason really will look at that whole complex of what he is as a character and his whole kind of backstory only that we know a little bit of uh, how he was teased how you know he tried to prove himself in grounded swimming um those kind of things he kind of relates to Shelley a little bit of a way uh, you know, I, I don't know that there's much really, you know, as, as an actor, you know, the, uh, Shelley and none of the people up there know Jason's backstory at all. We don't know. Right. We don't even know there's a Jason. I mean, 
we're, no, we're not count, we're not campers we're not counselors going there to the cursed camp we're just going up for the weekend we have no idea there's a killer on the list right. the killer is right because really it's not even friday 13th we're now right. I, it's like sunday the 15th because we're taking right it's the, you can you start after the day of of part two it's the next day right and it, and for people that don't know, part three is uh, in that movie is the only movie where Jason is never mentioned uh, by name in part mm-hmm. three. Yeah. Uh, so, and they, they're completely oblivious to anything going on. And it's never mentioned. He's just kind of a stalker. And that's where Jason kind of takes on to Larry, a different uh, kind of persona, you know, the way he kind of st- it isn't. He's not just a woodsman, you know, as, as he was in part two. Um, you know, he, he still is obviously reclusive, but he's kind of more, you know, he, he hides out in that bar and he kind of stalks more. He's more, uh, he just seems more, Brooklyn had a way about him, I love, which I think Ted White brought even further. I, it was a different sort of style, but he kept the Brooker sort of, I don't know, Brooker just had a real air, a nice uh, cockiness about the character. It was a lot of fun to watch. Mm-hmm. It still is. Yeah, no, Jason, uh, Richard is such a great Jason. This- He's fantastic. Yeah, what I want to ask you is, I know it brought it was a great thing for you. Did did people and you were so young? Obviously, you had probably brought you a lot of, of attention. Were people different towards you, like overall different than they were before? I mean, what type of attention did you get? Positive, negative? Well, I mean, my friends were my friends, and they gave me the same amount of shit after that they did before. Pay me more. Uh, in terms of, you know, when the movie came out, it was, you know, the number one movie in America for a few weeks, and and I was very recognizable. I mean, you know, I had still had that right. pro, and I'm fat, and and so for a, for a period of a few months, I, I, I was, you know, famous, quote-unquote. I'm You know, I'm, I mean, I, in that... If I went anywhere, people would, you know, I'd, they'd come up to me and say something, or, or I'd hear them talking. I, you know, I'd, you hear that, a cello, you know, you hear that in the background. I remember I went to uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain, like, a few weeks after the movie came out, and just walking, you know, you're walking down past the lines, and you can just hear people, a cello, oh, my God, a cello, oh, my God, you know, you just hear that. It's like, and I'm not used to that, and, I, you know, I, you know that was, so there was a little period of time where I was, you know, famous. Uh, so I, I you well, know, you and, and then. It, you must have Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, a, like, I'm, great, I'm, yeah. I'm an attention hog, you know, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah kind of, I call myself an attention whore, so I can relate. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I did a picture whore, yeah. Um, so, no, it, it was great. I think, yeah, you definitely are recognizable. And I think that's one of, the, one of the reasons, too. You definitely stand out in that movie because your character is so different from the rest. I mean, it was a, quite a colorful cast, I, and people have mentioned this too. If it were real life, what would have ever brought the, the crew of you guys together? You know, <laughs> the pregnant, uh, cu- the pregnant couple, and then you and Vera, and then the Cheech and Sean couple, and then it, it, it was a, definitely the most. Well, colorful other life. than the Cheech, because you know Dana, I mean Chris and 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 Debbie are best friends, and. Right, right. Uh, 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 Andy is 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 her boyfriend, and uh, Shelly's his roommate, and Vera's the blind date. So you know, I mean, right, you know, right. I, we're mm-hmm. Chuck and uh, yeah. Chil- we're Chuck and uh, uh, <laughs> Chuck yeah, and right, from no one yeah. else. The, you know, right. yeah. well, and, and Shelly would still ahead, be Shelley. saying, "I'm not an asshole." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an asshole. I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah. He would. Yeah, it, it was definitely, it's awesome. I know your time is limited, Larry. Um, we're, we're running up on about a half an hour. If you still have time, that's great. If not, we appreciate it either way. Um, I can I go another time. Obligated. Great, that sounds great. I'll, 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 hey, we'll, I'll keep you on all night. Don't go there. Uh, no. All right, great. Jay, was, I'm, I have a few more questions, but if yeah. you want to ask a couple, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that uh, really we kind of want to shift the conversation a little bit, too, because we want to get into some of the things law aspect obviously you are an attorney um obviously you're an attorney to the stars which is a you know slightly different um but you still know a little bit about the family law aspect and and i wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about that a little bit because uh, a lot of the people that are listening in tonight will be listening in because of uh the show and we kind of normally represent uh the movement so to speak and we wanted to give you the opportunity because uh, also you can kind of tell us things what, you know, you have seen people experience or, you know, family members have experienced the injustices of the family court system. 
Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't really have any stories. I don't really, I haven't had any uh, uh, friends who, you know, who had a bad, I mean, I've had friends who had bad divorces, but mostly it was about money, not about kids and, you know, right. community property stuff. But, you know, that's just yeah. California. Well, we I, I, I don't really, I, I, unfortunately, I don't really don't have much uh, insight <laughs> into, into I that area. I will say, I'm sorry, I'll get off that topic for a minute. I got to say, Larry, maybe a little, <laughs> little envious at the beginning. I got to give a shout out to Dave Robertson, who made this part three, uh, Dirty Brooker. And I only have his signature on the inside of it. And Larry showed yeah. me his mask at the beginning of the show, which is, with, yeah. and I believe Dave would, and it, he had a million signatures, and I believe he probably has it right, oh, there it is. Oh, it's a good thing it's not wow. within arm's reach. That's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, see, it's on, it's on the uh, video, but basically, yeah. I mean, all the yeah. all the Jasons have signed it. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, I see, uh, most of the cast of three: Tracy Savage, Nick Savage, Paul Kratka, Dana Kimmel, uh, Kimberly Beck. Um, uh, you know, our, our, Ari, our, Harry Manfredini. Uh, uh, I've got music. Uh, you got you. Uh, uh, Laura Park Lincoln, Kane. Oh, part seven, even. I mean, I, every time I go to a convention, I bring it. I know you're pretty active there. For people that don't know, he's referring to Kane Hodder, who played uh, Jason in parts 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, the yeah. only uh, Jason to play multiple times. I was actually watching um, this morning. I watched a little bit of 5, and I watched a little bit of 8, which I don't often do. Um, and I've got my Freddy versus Jason... Sure, and I and I was thought it was funny because people that don't know in part eight, Ken Krinziger plays Jason in uh, the verses is one of the stunt coordinators, there and he gets thrown by Kate Hodder because he was considered he was uh, one of the ones that was considered to play Jason in part eight. So um, awesome, Larry, good stuff. And so for people that don't know, I had to bring up that mask because uh, he had a million signatures. I was kind of showing him my mask and Brian at the beginning, and then he turned and showed me his, and I kind of put my tucked my tail. He did, he did. His is actually, I'm going to get that next. He's got a clean Jason 3, which is actually what I really like, because it's the original. And I do have Richard Brooker's uh, Jason mask from 3 tattooed on my right foot. Oh, no, no. You have I, Shelley's Jason mask. Oh, yes. Three. I have to correct myself. Yes, correct myself. Now, i got to ask you, besides trying to scare Vera, Shelley, what was your purpose of bringing that hockey mask up there? I mean, it wasn't like it was wintertime. You guys were going to skate. <laughs> No, uh, no, he brings mask. Remember, he has the he, in the first scene. Right. He has that other mask, right. that clear plastic mask. He brings, oh, that's right. and he brings the fake axe. He's just full of yeah practical jokes. Well, He's just a joker. Can, He's a funny guy. I can tell you, I watched part three. Part three, I think the the affinity for me is part three is the first one I ever watched, um, and it was on a black and white TV, and it freaked me out in a beautiful way. And the, what I, the first scene that I remember seeing is you, Shelley, in that clear mask. And it freaked me out as a kid because, you know, I had never seen I'm like, is this like the killer? Like, and then you know, I had no idea. And it's really freaky, the music they play. And that mask is just off-putting to me. I mean, I love the Jason mask. I'm like, that clear mask is really just creepy. And then you, of course, yeah. jammed it into Andy's shoulder, and it really upset him. So we'll give a yeah. shout-out to Andy out there. I think it was fake. You, you're not an asshole. You're an actor. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, Larry, I appreciate it. I know we're coming up on, uh, you know, toward the end of the half hour. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, and I want to quickly, I'll give a shout-out again to Tammy Clegg, and I'm going to let you say a few things, too, at the end, Mrs. Erner. And people like that, my sister out there, Sean McAndrew, people I grew up in Nashville outside of Boston, uh, Mass, and they know of my affinity for Jason and for Larry Zerner and, and all these movies. So this is, for a lot of people out there, a thrill, and for me personally, in a selfish way, this is an amazing mm -hmm. thrill. Uh, so thank you, Larry, for coming on. It, it truly, truly is an honor, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. All right, well, it was a pleasure. It was a good way to spend start off my Halloween night. Uh, now I'm going to go watch the Dodgers hopefully win. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah, I, I meant to mention that because you, now so you're a big fan, and, and I know there's a lot going on in the world of baseball. So you're going to be having your popcorn and getting ready on the edge of your seat. Yeah, well, the game probably the game started a few minutes ago, so yeah. <laughs> well, well, that shows you I am honored that you would come on when this game is starting. So please enjoy it, and uh, and I hope they win it all for you. Uh, and yeah, me too. Should, yeah, it should be true, exciting, true. Mr. Zerner. All right. Uh, on behalf of everybody out there in the heart community, the people listening out there, and all my friends and family, and, and Jay Moss, we thank you, sir.
Yes. All right. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Have a good night. All Happy right. Halloween, Thanks. everyone. Thanks. This is okay. okay. Happy yeah. Halloween. Awesome. So uh, Larry Zerner out there, uh, amazing, amazing work that he does. Uh, he has done in the past. And we thank him greatly for coming on the program. We're going to go ahead and head into our second hour with a song directly from that, I believe, isn't it? And that that uh, Friday the 13th? Is that right? But Jay, you're talking about this, this middle song? Yes. If it's the one I'm thinking of, this, yes. is, this is actually uh, from Friday the 13th, uh, part five. The three views, the first music mm-hmm. Jay played was uh, kind of a disco music from Friday part three, Friday the 13th, three. I uh, eighty two, and that mm-hmm. played in the intro with the opening credits. This part five music, uh, it, it, it was danced to uh, by a character in the middle uh, of, and we'll get into that during the movie. In the middle of the movie, it's become kind of a, a cult favorite uh, of, uh, and kind of a related with that movie. So yes, yeah, to, to make a short story long. Uh, so this is his eyes by Pseudo Echo. And we are back on the Far From Normal radio show on the Future of Our Children's Radio Network. Uh, this is Jay Moss, and I am so glad you are joining us on Halloween evening here with a Friday the 13th edition. And I've got my co-host, Bud Vino, here on the line with us again here. Bud, how are you doing? Yo, 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 and yo. Jay Money Moss, Tuesday, the 31st of October, 2017, 9 o'clock, just about the top of the hour, a little past, Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we had a very wonderful first half of the show. We had Mr. Larry Zerner on, who played Shelley in 1982's Friday the 13th, Part 3. Uh, what a pleasure. It was fun to hear those inside stories and those behind-the-scenes sort of things and see uh, Mr. Zerner's good nature, and as he told me, Larry, please. Uh, he's done amazing things in his life. Uh, it looks like he was put on a path and he's followed that path. I love to see it. And it was quite an honor just for me. As I told him on the phone, I had to stop him mid sentence. I know it's really annoying for him. I said, I'm sorry. I'm like a little shit on Christmas to hear your voice. And no, I'm talking to Shelly. What, what, what I know it might be small for you, but this is huge for me. I think I was trying to gush it. And I actually use that word. I apologize. Uh, it was awesome. And the second half, and I hope we got her all the numbers, uh, Jay. Uh, we have yes, yes, yeah. We we did message her the numbers here for the meeting ID. She has seen that and the blog talk number as well. So uh, we're just waiting on her to dial in. And uh, good. Thank yeah. you so much, Deborah, for coming on. We absolutely appreciate you. We love you and we care about you. So we <laughs> we are just so excited about the fact though that we've got you on the line finally. But <laughs> but wow, thank happens. you. Jay, I will say, Debbie, this is what, you know, quickly, all good things come to those who wait. And for people, I will give her a quick introduction since she's live. Now, 1985, Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, which for people that don't know, went in a little bit of a different direction. Uh, it was kind of a, a movie uh, that was kind of kept you guessing. It was mysterious. Uh, it, some people didn't like it then. It's, it's developed. I loved it since then. It's developed quite a following uh, in terms of, uh, the people's people liking the movie and the characters in the movie. And one of the characters was Tina, a character named Tina, who was played by uh, Debbie Voorhees, who's on the phone with us. So I, I give that brief introduction. I've talked to Debbie quickly before the show and a little bit in the weeks following. Thank you so much, Debbie, on Halloween night to be joining us. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. I am so excited to be here and so honored that you guys thought of me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, you're Thank very you. welcome. And I, Jay let me kind of run with this one because he knows about my, um, you know, uh, loving these sort of movies. So, and I reached out right <laughs> and I said, well, I said to Jay too because I reached out to you and Larry Zerner too and you guys were very quick and, and very um, courteous. And as I said, I know it might be weird and I know you're used to it in terms of people and fans and things. But for me, as I said to Larry, these are movies I watched since I was a child. So if we'd actually speak with you, it's, I, hey, it's Christmas morning to me. This Halloween is Christmas to me. <laughs> hey, for <laughs> most of us horror fans, Halloween is Christmas and better than Christmas. 
It you is. know, I mean, I wanna, every Friday the thirteenth, every Halloween, it should be a national holiday. What is this crap? Or it's not. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> uh, for people that don't know, too, uh, Debbie Voorhees and people that heard Jason Voorhees, uh, there, that was just sort of a uh, karma sort of thing there. I love that uh, affiliation. Uh, there's no relation, although there might be. Right, Jeremy? There could be. These could it be could a long be. Long family it, members. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I, I, know, I think it has some possibilities there. I gotta look up on my family tree. <laughs> right, you never know how far that branches. And Debbie's pretty heavily in Scott still uh, in the in the horror movement. Has a lot of fans. Has a uh, has pages. Has uh, it's just amazing the following that you have. And since I've been in these groups too to see and the knowledge that your fans have. Uh, it's crazy. I know. I really had no idea that I had so many fans out there. I mean, I, I knew just being on Facebook because in some ways, because I would have, you know, new fans contacting me every day. But when I actually started reaching out to them just a few months ago to um, put my horror group together and to tell them about some horror films and stuff I'm doing and I decided to start doing horror conventions and oh my gosh it's um, just going like crazy I never imagined it would grow so fast so quick yeah Are you there? It, it, it's yeah I'm still here Debbie sorry it's crazy because when I started um, you know getting into some of these groups I've never actually I'm going to go to some of these conventions but it's amazing for people that don't know. There's some people, that, and, and uh, Debbie can tell you, that are in these groups. I mean, some of these groups, I mean, they're in the thousands. There's some of these Jason groups oh, yeah. that are in there, like upwards of 20,000. This isn't small potatoes. In these conventions, they do it up. Uh, they've got everybody. Oh, yeah. I think it's great that you're getting into that because I know your fans um, would definitely would love to see that and, and, and see you now. Really, honestly, being a part of Friday the 13th is like being a part of Star Trek. I mean, mm -hmm. oh. it's just you have those avid fans and you have that kind of popularity. And I really, you know, had no idea. Um, yeah, I didn't until I reached out and it was like, whoa, hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll, I'll, I'll pose the same question I did for uh, Larry Zerner, who we had, we had on earlier. And I know yours was a few years after, it was 1985, um, it was a different mm -hmm. tone. You and I talked privately about, uh, rest in peace, Danny Scheinman, who directed the movie, um, and that it was, mm -hmm. you know, it was a different sort of direction and things. So what I said to Larry is, did you, he said he, you know, he obviously knew it was big, but he had no idea, you know, looking back that it would be so huge. Did you know, I know it was a few years later, there was part four, the, the final chapter in between there, and, you know, and. But did you know then how big it was going to, that it was, it was going to be? No, not really. You have to remember back when I did this film, you know, films had a shelf life. Um, it wasn't that long ago, and I certainly during my lifetime, where the only time you ever saw a movie was in the movie theater, and then if you're lucky, they did a TV version that might be released later that you could see. But for the most part, if you didn't catch it at the movie theater, you didn't get to see it. It was gone, and it was gone forever. And then along came VHS, and um, people were able to see the movies and let them last a little bit longer. But once again, it had a shelf life. They weren't going to keep the movies forever in, in there. Now you've got streaming and every other possibility and the Internet and a way for fans to connect. And, um, you know, that just brings new life into it. I, I think that they would have been just as popular, but we might not have known about it because people wouldn't have been communicating and um, working together and getting together and talking about it. And um, yeah, you probably would have some of the conventions and stuff, but you wouldn't have the same uh, fervor that you have with the ability of everybody to come together and to talk and converse and stuff. So I don't think there was really any way unless you could have projected into the future what, uh, you know, our means of communication and everything was going to be. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point, Debbie, because I've never really thought about that. It's true, because back then you never could have known what it was going to be like in terms of how we communicate and the Internet and, and all the different things and, and the ways that people can reach out to each other. So definitely... And I meant to bring on because 
I have, and now that you said VHS, that is true. And a lot of us out there, I know for me, I would tape um, on VHS, like if, if the movie was you know, on HBO back then or on, on regular TV, I would tape the movies. And I still have, I found it the other day. Um, I, I probably did this in about 1988. I have, the, I have two movies on one VHS where I, where I had them recorded. The first one, and I don't know why it's not in this or anything, is Friday the 13th, 7, with Lar Park Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, from, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. And then I have Friday the 13th, 5, A New Beginning, right underneath it. So I, and I have the VHS still with my handwriting from back then. I meant to bring on it like, um, somewhere yeah. around the house. I found it. It is very neat. Um, and just to, just to have that and speak to you now. And, and, I, and I'll ask this, too, and I asked this of Larry, too. I know you did other things, too, Debbie, back then, and it, it, it opened different doors, and you were doing th other things before that. I know for Larry, it was kind of his... He was a, li a little bit younger than you. It was his first sort of um, case. You had done certain things that had brought some attention. Were you prepared, and what type of attention did it bring you, like, after the movie? Did people recognize you like they did him? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, it was, it, it was um, very interesting. Um, of course, I, you may know that um, I also had some issues because I tried to teach high school. Uh, yes. One of the, the um, modern technology things that brought was standing in my classroom trying to go over. I was teaching 12th grade uh, British literature and writing and um, walking over to get your student's um, phone because he's messing with them. You find your boobs are being text messaged around the class. Right. Oh, so, wow. right. Yeah. I just, you know, talk about the grace under fire. Just, okay, put them away. Right. Back up on the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, wanna, I didn't, I I didn't miss a you. beat. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I was going to ask you when we were in preparation for this and we were trying to find different videos and different things. Obviously, there's a one cut, I think, pretty much that's on uh, the Internet that's pretty famous, obviously. And we, we've kind of had to dub over it a little bit and put some Jason masks there. To, to protect that area, but obviously, uh, we, you know, what's it like for you? Because obviously on YouTube, um, they say that you are one of the, uh, I, I would say the hottest is what they put, put it as, the hottest That's definitely, uh, female yeah. actors of, of, of Friday the 13th. I'm very honored. I uh, just say I'm very honored. Yeah, it's <laughs> surprising. Who knew? I mean, I I know there was a thing where it was the top thirteen, um, basically the hottest horror kills of all time, not just for Friday the Thirteenth wow. of all time. And I'm right yeah, there yeah. with Janet Lee, and I'm just like going, oh. "Holy crap!" I am wow. very honored. <laughs> Yeah. Company. And, I'll say, yeah. I, and I know it wasn't, I know that the scene was supposed to be longer too. And I, and I don't know if you've seen this. You may have it, it on wasn't. YouTube. You've got to know the truth. No, right, it was yeah. never going to be longer. <laughs> right. Well, Debbie and I talked about this and I want to clarify, we won't get too much into it, but I know there's been some uh, talk about that, that the scene was supposed to be this, and it was this. It's, you know, it, it wasn't, yeah. I guess, you know, out of respect for Danny no. Simon, it wasn't what it, what it sounded like. Um, but I want to stick this yeah. too. If you've seen it on YouTube, there's a, and I somebody else did it. It's not something that was you know found footage. Somebody dubbed in your kill and actually did you know as if you know actually you can actually see everything. It's a computer version of the shears going into your eyes and coming out, and it's really cool the way it's done. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's kind of like the. You'll have to show that, me it because n nothing was ever done where you could see these shears go through the eyes. Yeah, you can tell it's it's done computer, and it's almost kind of. I think the the comment or something was like, you know, uh, what it should have been before the MPA uh, butchered it. Uh, and I know. Yeah, that well, time but too, see, I they see. never shot that that way. That's the thing. I don't know where all these weird rumors come up. With. Other than they make cool stories and it makes people excited and makes them want to go see the movie and and imagine what could have been, what they might have seen, what ended up on the. Um, on the floor and the cutting room, and it was like, no, no, actually, none of that happened. Um, yeah, it just flat out didn't happen. You know, yeah. uh, they never showed the the shears going through. I mean, I would have had to gone through a complete full oh, yeah. head busk, and that was never made, never happened. Um, yeah, and. Uh, you can tell. Yeah, you could tell it was definitely computer generated. It was someone had done it not too yeah. long ago, just to kind of put it. You could tell it wasn't something that was done back then. And I want to ask you, 
Friday Five out of all of them, I know as Larry mentioned too, a lot of times you don't even meet the other actors, but five more so than any. Um, did you ever even have the opportunity? Did you meet Dick Wean? Did you ever even meet? Because you, I don't know if you were ever even any scenes with him. Or I know uh, you also worked. Who worked on that movie was Mark Venturi, who's passed away since then too. Uh, Venturini, I believe, his name too. He was in um, Return of the, uh, uh, Return of the Living Dead too. Um, so right. you you work you work for some, with some pretty, and I think he would have been. He's pretty well known in the community, and I think he would have done. Uh, if cancer hadn't struck him down, from what I understand, it, he would have done a lot more things too. Uh, you work with some great people right. and are still active as well. Right, right. Yeah, no, I've been, I consider myself very lucky. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've enjoyed every moment that I've worked in film, both in front of yeah. and behind the camera. Yeah, and quickly, I want to ask you, because you mentioned your teaching. Are you still planning on, I know you're uh, doing movies and things now too, and I want to quickly talk about that as well, but... Um, you you are not by any means uh, a dumb woman. Uh, I, I you know in terms of your teaching and things that I've that I've researched. Well, thanks. I have, yeah, <laughs> I have an affinity for writing as well. So when I saw that, and I had heard uh, well before this about the issues that you had had in teaching and this and that, it's unfortunate. Uh, as you and I talked about, right. through, hey, everybody everybody has their it's you know things that they do. Nothing like that. Most of you know parents that might have been up and down. So, so. I'm quite sure much racier videos in their closets of themselves. Yeah. Uh, than yeah. Anything that you ever I, I put out. would not be surprised. Probably a few right. of the dads knew my part well. <laughs> well exactly. Yeah. And they just, and they, it's one of those All I can say to them is bite me. <laughs> exactly. Bite me in that. Yeah, exactly. And they have to act. They have to pretend like they're appalled with their wives, too. Oh, my God, honey. That is oh, awful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. The kids. Oh, my God. The kids. <laughs> Yeah, where's that DVD? Yeah, one of them, so I can really see what I'm talking one of about. Them, the dad was, one of them, the dad was sending his son off to the military where he could be killed, and but he's worrying about his son seeing my boobs. Like, really? Yeah, wow. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, it's a little skewed, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Right. yeah. No, it makes no sense. I, I'm and sorry. I'm I have n no understanding whatsoever for this bizarre concept that somehow or another that nudity is bad or wrong or anything. It's just, you know, these are made up rules by a society right. that has n nothing better to do than to just, just say, oh, that's bad. This is okay. You can show your elbow or you can show your <laughs> right. knees. At one time you couldn't show your knees. At one time you couldn't show your ankles, but now it's okay to show your ankles. But, um, you know, it it, I, just, it makes no sense whatsoever. It's just yeah. ridiculous. And Debbie and I briefly talked, and I, I'm on in the and Jake tell you too. I am on the same. Hey, do you? It's exactly what I said to you. I said I tell people, do you do what makes you happy if you're not hurting anybody? The people that have an issue with it are the ones who generally have an issue with jealousy, or you know that happy people don't cut others down. And if you're worried about a little bit of nipple showing, maybe you should loosen up a little bit and have a little bit of fun on Halloween mm -hmm. and watch Friday Five, a new beginning. Because I might do that after. I might to show some respect. I'll watch three and five because I'm definitely in the mood. I want to Debbie. Yeah. Quickly, you are in the middle, and I know you are. You, you're. I guess you could say casting uh, right now for. And I know you had uh, people, and I was one of them. I will say, who put my name in to be killed. <laughs> I told you I want to be I want to be butchered, and if I'm picked, that's great. If not, uh, more power to the people to do. Uh, if do you want to quickly talk about that, I want to just hear a little bit more about that, if you would. Um, this is um, a film called The List, and it is about a serial killing social light. It's a horror comedy. Uh, it's going to have a lot of thriller elements in it, though, as well as the comedy elements. Uh, kind of think, imagine if you were to um, marry um, Hitchcock Psycho to Shaun of the Dead, um, you know, Edgar Wright Shaun of the Dead. Then you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. Um, yeah. She is a very wealthy woman and has seen and done everything in life except seeing the seedy side of it. And she just is frankly obsessed with the idea of murder. I did a short on it. Um, it's actually a long short. It's 40 minutes. 
Um, it's black and white, moody, kind of artistic piece. Um, not something I really thought um, horror fans would embrace, but um, she's a socialite obsessed with murder, and um, the horror fans have really loved the character, and that's when I knew oh. I need to move her from this, what was essentially a stage production that I filmed, and um, move her into a full-fledged true film with, you know, a full-out serial killer. And, uh, you know, and it's time. I mean, we typically, when we have women who are serial killers, we've got to kill them at the end of it. Oh, my God. You just got right. to because, oh, my God, you can't have a woman on the loose killing anybody. This is called a movie. It's right. Believe it's pretend. Let's enjoy it and realize that we can have a serial killer through a series of movies. That's a woman. And, uh -huh. um, you know, I mean, there's just so much. But if you look at, you know, Pamela Voorhees, why, why didn't she stay on as the killer? Why did, right, why did right. she have to die? Now, now the son well, can kill all he wants. And, well, exactly. and there's no problem with that. Hey, Debbie, I will completely concur with you on that, too. And if you look, see, and that's true, too, because a lot of times I know for men and, and boys that are into Jason, whether people want to believe it or not, Jason is an empowering character for a lot of people. So there's no, and, mm -hmm. and people can look at it, and, there, and there's a lot of things, too, that I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Debbie knows more so than anybody. And I'll agree, there's, there's no reason. And I think, again, we talked about societal issues. I think it's the same sort of thing, like you said, the female character. And I know they dabbled. Back in the day, like Sleepaway Camp um, dabbled with Angela, the character of the ended up being a serial killer was a, was a woman, and they kind of uh, went in kind of comedic direction with that too. And there were certain things I think, obviously, um, you know, seventies and then the remakes of uh, I, I Spit on Your Grave. I know those aren't serial killers; mm -hmm. those are vengeance movies of women who are empowered. Uh, but I think right. it, it is time to have an artsy sort of. Uh, and I know that I haven't fit into this; people will kill me, especially our horror freaks. Uh, American Psycho, they actually did have an American Psycho 2, which uh, isn't, uh, not to be mean, it's not too worth watching, but they did try and go a direction with a female serial killer, and the story was just weak. And I think it's, mm -hmm. if you can make it different, people are craving something different. That's why people, you know, kind of gravitate, uh, whether it seems, you know, people might like the traditional stuff. They also like new ideas. And like you said, I mean, there's a whole, right. whole direction that you can go with this that is unopened. Right, right. There is, and I, I would agree with you, Bud. Um, I would, I would ask Deborah here also. I mean, you've got th the only thing that you've got when when you cast some of these characters is 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 the female figure going to be strong enough? You know, and is that are you going to have to cast a you know woman WWE figure to play that part so that it is much more credible? as physicality no i'll say this no i think I'll for think a so. female you want to make her i want you want to make her pragmatic and sly oh. and sexy and deceptive and just straight up brutal that's my opinion Ooh. but interesting i don't know Debbie. What, i think it's going to definitely be a combination. i think it's definitely going to be a combination um i don't need um somebody from the wwe to uh, <laughs> right. make this happen i need somebody yes uh sly cunning um i have another film that i'm working on where i have a basically an equivalent of a monster killer it's a horror thriller um, that I'm excited about. I can't tell you too much about it, but um, it's going to be a really exciting film. And in that one, I definitely want her to be, um, you know, well versed in the martial arts. But um, no, we're talking about a. We want an all somebody who's all woman, who right. yeah. you know. Trust me, darling. Yeah, I don't. A woman wants to take you <laughs> down. She will take you down because you will. Oh. As my mother says, one day when my my I had a. Um, a, a member of our family who smarted off to my mother. It was a male member. And my mother turned around and looked at me. She said, if you ever raise your hand to me, just remember you will fall asleep sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think say, women aren't tough? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll 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 I, tough. Believe it was your mother, I believe it was your mom's birthday not too long ago, if, I, if my memory serves it the right. Was, it was, it was, yeah. Happy birthday to your mother out there. And she, she looks like a sweetheart, Thank just you. like you. You do, yeah. She's so, amazing. I, 
Well, you know, usually that's the case. You'll have uh, parents that are very supportive. And so I think that's why we all are, are lucky when we have good supportive parents. So we, we all try to be that right. our parents ourselves. So a lot of, a lot of credit to your mom, because again, the apple obviously didn't fall too far from the tree and you're blessed in that sense. You both are. Uh, so yeah, awesome. my, mom, my mom's here. very supportive. That's, that's yeah, she's, great. she's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and I want to ask you real quick, I know, and you talked about, um, and we won't get into too many details in the movie or the different things that you have in the works right now. It seems like you're a multifaceted and multitasking, Deborah. It seems like you've got a lot of different things going on in your mind. You, you definitely have people that don't know out there. Debbie is very interactive with her fans. Uh, she's very encouraging. Right. She's fun. She's knowledgeable. And that's what fans respect, too. She gets her hands there. She gets right in there. She doesn't, I see her in these groups. She's not better than anybody. She asks questions. She interacts. She's great. She's what every fan wishes when they think about characters, what they wish the character would be in real life. And you're definitely a blessing to have oh, a lot wow. of fans. And, and I, I know we all love it interacting with you. I, I look forward to getting on and seeing the different things you post and the different things your fans post. And I know there's been a lot of, uh, I want to give a shout out to, I know you actually turned me on to it. Uh, uh, Never hike alone. Oh is, yeah. Is that, it's awesome, is that, isn't it? Um, Oh, incredible. I will say that Andrew is going to be in a film that I'm doing. I will tell you that much. Amazing. Amazing. Andrew is the main yeah. character, if you folks don't know. He, awesome. never, he was amazing. And that was a hard one to pull off. I mean, people that don't know, Never Hike Alone is a fan film, a continuation, basically, of, uh, in Friday the 13th series. And it's a, kind of a first person. And it's a very, mm -hmm. it's a role that, he, uh, that, that there's not a million people in it. This is someone who has to carry the movie. And and he does it, right. which is something I, it's hard to do for people that don't know to be able to carry it. And, and from that perspective and keep people engaged. I, amazing. I, up and coming I was after, impressed. I, it definitely Without yeah, question. No, I was very I, impressed with the way he carried that film. And I will say for people that don't know, the reviews out there are very high. Uh, the fans have collectively mm -hmm. uh, pretty much given it a nice thumbs up. I've read a lot of reviews um, that have given it a thumbs up and to his performance. Uh, and the direction, the directing, too, it's been given a lot of thumbs up in terms of the, uh, just the cinematography, the, the way it all is laid right. out. And the Jason, too. I've heard a lot of good things right. about Jason. Been, and and in, it, in it, I know, for people that don't know out there, there is uh, some uh, uh, cameo, too, uh, from Tommy Jarvis from one of the Fridays. And there's other things going on in that movie. Uh, it's great. Right. Great. A lot of, a lot of credit to that movie. So people out there watching Never Hike One, I know Debbie has endorsed it quite a bit. Uh, and is, is uh, familiar and friendly with the other people that are involved in that movie. So awesome. Awesome. And we're looking forward to getting to see the work that you have coming out. Crazy. Looking forward Thank to you. That. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just having a blast. It's uh, wonderful to communicate with uh, the fans directly. Uh, they're, they've been incredible as far as being my guide through horror because, you know, I have not traditionally in my past enjoyed the scary movies, but... I've tried so many at this point, uh, you know, for them, because they'll say, well, try this, watch this, watch that. And, and realizing, you know, I really need to be a part of that horror world and mm -hmm. making movies in the horror world because there's a fan base there. And, yeah. um, you know, and I have to say, I'm starting to really like them. I used to be so <laughs> scared of them. I mean, like, really scared, like, get under the table scared, you know, cover my eyes, yeah. you know. So you can't go to the bathroom without me! <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's really funny. It's funny, Debbie, because I'll give a show to my wife, Alice. She has known since she met me. I've been with her for about a dozen years. And that my affinity mm -hmm. and the way I, and she's always been, you know, just supportive in terms of the way I am. But only, it's funny that you mentioned this, only in the past couple of years has she really kind of said, you know what, I'm going to start to try it. And she loves them. Now it's to the point where, you know, I'll say, you want to watch a movie? She'll say, hey, let's watch 31 or let's watch. And I'm like, well, the other night, and I said, like, she, and I think it's with a lot of women too. I think embrace that kind of carnivorous, that kind of, um, that aspect of your personality that you might not because of guilt or what people put on you or the different perceptions people have. Embrace that mm -hmm. animalistic side, that kind of barbaric side in terms of just go with what it is. Have fun with it. Enjoy what it's supposed right. to be instead of dealing with all your hang-ups around it. You know, and I, I know for my wife... There's, um, 
Yeah, I think there's some truth to that. Um, but I think uh, for me, it was just flat out fear. It was like, how can you enjoy this idea that somebody was just murdered? To me, it was very real that, you know, not, yes, I understood that it was a movie and that it didn't really happen. But my viewpoint was, is that, but this really happens. But once mm, I started yeah. understanding how a horror fan looks at it and sees it, they like the boo and the scary and the jump and, oh, wasn't that a really cool special effect? Oh, look how right. realistic it looked when they stabbed the person. They're not going, oh, my God, somebody was just stabbed or could have been stabbed or it's very real. And once I stopped looking at it from my perspective and started looking at it from a horror fan's perspective, um, it, kind of, it opened a whole new world of really enjoying and loving the horror films. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, De- so. Debbie, I'll concur again with that, because when I was younger, the people that just looked at it on the surface, is I was, I was always into this. They didn't understand, but, you know, behind the scenes with all that, I was really, really a huge fan of Tom Savini. I still am. I love mm-hmm. the second one and four. And I used to, I bought, as you, I'm sure, know, Tom Savini had VHS tapes on you know, special effects. I used to make what were called like blood bags, uh, things. I was into the effects. Mm-hmm. I was into all, like, that's what I was really like, who was the best? Like, you know, Beekler's Jason and Seven for me is, you know, one of the best in terms of the mascot, the work he did there. Uh, not the CGI, oh, but the hands on, you know, that where actually Tom Zabini is an artist. I mean, I, I know there's people out there too. He's amazing at what he does. It's a dying craft. And it's something that's the thing too. And it was a, those movies for certain people that were, uh, maybe in abusive situations. I know Jason was an empowering force. He was someone that, if you right. were being abused as a kid, that didn't put up with that. He was your strength. He was the guy that would knock right. over anyone that was hurting you. That's the way he was for me. Uh, it wasn't mm-hmm. the twisted way that a lot of people took it. He's what, and I say to my wife sometimes, people don't understand as much as they you know, feared it when I was a kid. Jason's actually what kept me from acting out, as opposed to people thinking that that's what was, you know, it might have been, you know, not that I acted out as a kid, but it was actually helping right. me funnel some of that aggression and some of that uh, negative stuff and kind of spin it into a fantasy world. But I was very, I was lucid. I was very well aware of reality and, and non-reality and, you know, actually not hurting. People. Right. Most fans are. It's pretty, pretty knowledgeable. If they, if they get a bad rap, that they're not heightened like that. I, I, I think you're people. right. Yeah, I think that horror fans are some of the um, nicest, kindest people that you will ever meet, and they are certainly some of the most loyal. I've um, definitely, over the years, uh, made friends with some that I I call my friends. They're my friends. They're people I care about, and, um, you know... uh, it's it's a different world, and it's something that uh, maybe everybody doesn't always understand. I love what you're talking about as far as um, Jason and his youth. The story I want to tell, one day I want to direct a Friday the 13th, um, but I want to tell the story of him as a child from the get-go. Right. And I'm talking about a serious, um, both, you know, a horror drama that tells the story of his life. And, and you know, it'll be before ever, you know, um, you know, before the Friday 2. We get into some of the things with mom and uh, with just him as a child. Because um, how can you not feel for this child who was so horrifically right. treated, you know? Right. I just want to well, say that, that I didn't treat him bad. I would have been nice to him. <laughs> yes, you would have. And I will say quickly, James, I, have. On, w, I know. And I know that's, I know, as I said before, that's what it was for me. Is, you know, Michael Myers is a little different. It's because Michael Myers was kind of the faceless boogie man. Jason, you could actually, and I love Michael Myers, but Jason, especially for the things I was experiencing, a lot of us did back then, he was my strength. He, I didn't have certain things. He was my empowerment. It wasn't in a way of going out to victimize people. It was, you know, no, no, you are strong enough if you're picked on. Like, you can be that strong in terms of not let, allowing that to happen. And, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the way it was for a lot of my friends. It wasn't what people thought were, oh, they're just, they're just uh, you know, dumb kids getting into it. We, and as you said, Debbie, I would love to see that. I'll be honest, and I'm not mm-hmm. doubting Love Zombie's uh, remake of Halloween back in the day in 07, because I liked the first one. But even deeper than that, just the surface, you know, what you see is, you know, the child was beaten in a bad home. No, no. And I think exploring the relationship with Pamela Voorhees is something that hasn't, you know, people talk about exploring the 
relationship with his father, but no one really has dug in too deeply, even though it seems like they might have, in that relationship with his mother as well, and what, what kept him going. No, I think it, it really, we should know about his dad, we should know about his family situation, we should know if he has siblings, we should know, you know, about his friends. I mean, there's a whole world that needs to and should be created uh, about how he began. Because there, right. there's like this, to me, there's like this kernel of a compelling story there that has never right. really been explored. And just imagine the, you know, the, the power and such that can come from knowing about this child in his early life mm-hmm. and how he dealt with it and, um, you know, who he really was. I mean, mm-hmm. completely taking off the mask. And I, I, I think that fans would really love to see that, would love to see yeah, that absolutely. story. Because it's yeah, so many really would. pieces. Well, without they would like to really kind of get a background and understand and know what, what created Jason to be the way that he is at this, you know, throughout these one, two, three, four, five, you know, and on. <laughs> how does how does that person evolve into being what they become? And that's obviously right. something that's a backstory. It's good. I'll say quickly, for me, Jason is the true underdog story. You know, a lot different mm-hmm. than, you know, Freddie, Mike Myers. He's the true underdog story of what we all have been at some point in life, picked on, ostracized, made to feel less than what we're worth, you know, made to feel outcast, made to feel like garbage. And Jason was the one for right. all of us who felt that way that said no more and did in, in, on film what we couldn't do. He empowered a lot of right. us to not do that. So a lot of respect for you. Uh, I almost said Tina. <laughs> I just, yeah. Ms. Morgan, Ms. Morgan said, and for the, for the series, and I am definitely in the mood to watch some Friday movies tonight. So thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're, we're already up on time. It's unfortunate. Hopefully we can right. have you back and you can tell us what you've been up to and I'm going to keep promoting your things. And before you go, anything that you want to promote, feel free to do that. Well, thank you. Um, You know, the list was a big one. I would love it if anybody wants to join me on my page. It's just Deborah Voorhees, Sheer Horror. And yes, it's a spelling like the shears, you know, that you get stabbed with, that I got stabbed with. (laughs) So Sheer Horror Group, come and join me. Um, You know, we have a lot of fun. I try my best to communicate with fans as much as possible. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue. They're just way too much fun not to. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much. And we, we, we really appreciate you coming on. And uh, we will definitely keep in contact with you. And you are invited on the show any time that you'd like to come on. Thank you so much, guys. I so appreciate right. it. Send me um, a link and everything so I can share it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We will. Yeah, without, mm-hmm. without question, right. real quickly thank again, you. Uh, Deb. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much, and, and, and we're going to keep pushing what you do and keep doing what you do. I want to see those new uh, movies out. I can't wait to see the new uh, direction, the serial killers, the Jason stuff. And you've got a plethora of ideas, I know, that are going to be coming to fruition soon. So thank you again. Yes. Thanks so much, guys. Deborah Voorhees, Deborah Voorhees. Um, amazing stuff. We've had two outstanding interviews, and, of course, Bud, uh, it's the awful time. Uh, the depressing yes. time. And I know I'm going yeah. to don't have Jesse on tonight. Um, so we'll have a yes. little more time. And this worked out timing wise perfectly. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and we'll have uh, Debbie on again. And, and Larry, hopefully he had a good time as well. It seemed like they yeah. both did. Uh, and we did yes. too. And, and, and the reason too for the Jay stuff that I mentioned, uh, I'll go out with this Jay. Um, and then uh, I know you'll do your thing because we only have a few minutes left. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason, too, for the Jason stuff, as I mentioned before, uh, with Debbie, the true underdog story, right? Jason was the, the one that was picked on, who no one thought could come back, who people, he was, he was a nothing. He was a joke. People put a burlap, burlap sack on his head, and he drowned because he was so ostracized from the group, right? He wasn't the popular one, okay? And I guess I'll say this, you know, in a, in a proverbial way, right? Be Jason. Be the one who says no more. And take what you take what's yours. Again, I don't mean going out killing everybody. I hope people understand what I'm saying is don't believe that you're nothing. Don't believe that you're right. that's one of the reasons Jason's drowned, guys. 
because, you know, obviously he didn't know how to swim, but he was also an outcast to the point where he drowned and he took that stand up for yourself, believe in yourself, believe it. The only reason why you don't is you've been cut down by people in your life because that is not how you're born thinking nothing of yourself. Uh, other people have mm -hmm. made you believe that and they want you there. It's a very pli pli pliable place to have you a very easy place to have you bend and do whatever they want. Start doing what you mm -hmm. want, what your heart wants. Give a shout out quickly to my beautiful wife, Allison. I love you, sweetheart. There's one woman in this world that, uh, you know, has my heart. That's my wife always and forever. My youngest son, my littlest, bestest buddy, Mason. Uh, he is up still right now at almost 10 o'clock on Halloween. I want to go, I'm going to go through all of his candy after uh, and steal some of it. And to my biggest, bestest buddy, Carter, daddy loves you. I'm going to talk to you soon. Uh, you're the reason I do everything. I might be your hero, but the only reason I'm heroic is because of you. The day you were born, December 28, 2005, is the day I was reborn. And your brother just keeps pushing me. Carter is my left-hand man. He's also left-handed. That's why I have this on my left hand. Mason is my right-hand man, and he's on my right arm. Love you guys. Love to everybody out there. Pete McNeil, Ted Fogg, Brenda Johnson, Jesse Weiner, we miss you tonight. Everybody out there, we love you. And to Deborah Voorhees and Larry Zerner, we thank you so much. Everybody out there, keep your chins up. All my horror freaks out there, keep your chins up. Thank you for tuning in. And all the parental equality folks out there, too, in the parental rights movement, we love you. Keep your chins up. It ain't over until you say it's over. Thanks for joining us tonight. Awesome, awesome stuff. And I want to say also thank you again to Ted Fogg, some of the amazing work that he's done. I'm sure he's going to add a whole lot of stuff to this we haven't even seen yet because we're live on the radio guys we don't get to see what he he produces out there so we'll watch it later but I'm sure it was amazing. yes uh i knew that he was going to do a lot of special effects tonight or, or some of those things so that's that's awesome and we we look at what he's doing mm -hmm. Jay, quickly there's one person i didn't mention and i quickly want to get it out of the way not out of the way but I, there's someone could be a reason there's a man that man he's always been there he, he's my brother and that's Jay Moss. I love you, Jay. One of the best friends I've ever had. A brother with an ER. That's a brother for life. I'm, you know, ride or die with you, brother. I'm very proud of you. And I couldn't have handpicked somebody I'd rather do this with. I love you, brother. Very proud. Very honored. Always. My brother, Jay Moss, who helps keep this thing going. We love you, Jay. You're my man. Keep it up. Same back at you, brother. Um, I'm, I'm proud to be able to do this with you. Uh, I know that there was when we when we first started this, there was nobody else that I wanted to reach out to and and make sure that we we got in contact and we started doing a show together because uh, it, it's it's all about empowerment. And if you don't have empowerment, you know, if if your mind ain't in the game, if, if your mind ain't in it, you might as well forget it. And and that's how I've always approached things. And I want somebody who's beside me who's got their mind in this in this game so brother love you and uh also to all of those out there we we love you we appreciate you you are loved you are you are cared about and you are important in this movement and we want to go on here with a few songs here halloween by the Michigans. happy halloween